Welcome to this video which focuses on what is new in LangGuardian version 10. My name is Darren Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netforge. I'm now logged on to my LangGuardian. First change is we've moved the left hand menu up here to the top. And this gives us more space for displaying reports and dashboards. So to access reports, just click the option, select the report and you can then run it. And by clicking on more here you get a list of all advanced reports. Any custom reports you set up are shown over here on the right hand side. So you can just select whatever report you want and you can then run it. This version also introduces our new search page. And our search page brings together the four most common ways LangGuardian is used. Bandwidth troubleshooting, network forensics, file activity and web activity. You can set this up as your default home page or your start page. So to do that, if you click up here on the right hand side, I'm logged out as administrator, so you click that, go to account settings, and I can choose either the search page or the dashboard view as my default start page. Both options are available as well up here at the top, so you have search or dashboard. So let's take a look at the search page. Well, the first thing I want to do is I've got users in a remote site complaining that access to some business applications is slow. So I want to try and troubleshoot the problem and see what happened. So I go to IP address the subnet. And in here, I just type in the subnet for that site, 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Press the go option. In your case, it'll focus on the last one hour of activity. I've changed my system here to focus on the last 24 hours. Now you can change that yourself, then you can select one hour, four hours, 24 hours, or click the calendar here, or the clock symbol, to select a custom time period, and then just update the page by clicking refresh. So let's see, what do we know about what's happening on this link? Well, I'm seeing a lot of web traffic, actually. Uh, between web and proxy traffic, that's about a quarter of all the bandwidth that's been used. What are the top talkers on the link? Packets sent received. What are the top web conversations? What are the top connections to our proxy? So the users go directly to the web and also via our proxy. What files have been copied up and down to Windows file shares? Looks like got some MP3 files. And what are the top sites being accessed? Websites based on the number of hits. Strange pirate page seems to be number two. A um, lot of web traffic, so I want to troubleshoot that further. So any of these blue links allow us to drill down. So I want to focus in here on the first one, which is web traffic, and see what's happened. So top of the list here, we well, probably the first three might take a look at. They're both over 600 megabytes each. So we click on the traffic total. And we now arrive at this page. We've introduced a new change here as well. By drilling down in this traffic, we're now going to get to see what websites were accessed and what pages. If you want the old style drilling down to kind of session level information, hit the little plus here and you can see the flow type of data. You can drill down and, and get source destination ports, that type of low level traffic information. But I want to get some information as to what sort of pages or what, in this case, what videos were being watched on YouTube. So I click on the traffic total. This is now resolved to web activity, so now drill down on this. And we get to see not just what website is accessed. In case of YouTube, this version of Langarni will also resolve the video name. So we can see here that the user was accessing a video called The Singing Ringing Tree. Now we don't have a user on this report just yet, but I can click the user button here, and that will resolve this IP address to a username. So it's actually Sean Tor. So I want to take a closer look at what Sean has been doing on our network. And to do that, let's go back to our search page. I'm going to go to Network Forensics, select Username. And another new feature in LangGuardian is the way it can prompt you as to what user you're looking for. So if, as you start typing in, it'll start prompting you. So Sean Tor, that's who I'm looking for. Select the user, press Go. So curious as to what he's been doing on my network. You get a very similar view with the brand of troubleshooting, but in this case we're really just focusing on a single user. So we can see here firstly, um, Swift the last element, a lot of web traffic, also he's using proxy as well. Um, user events, some suspicious activity here with whatever system he's logged on to. Um, he's modifying Cisco devices, possibly spam from his now PC. Also, conflict worm, so I think we need to have a speak to Sean. 
Um, he's actually logged on to six different, for many years, five different systems on our network. So suspicious looking email coming from him as well, looks like spam. What are the websites he's accessing? Also proxy sessions the user is ac has set up, so he's via some sort of an external proxy actually in this case here. So there's his client IP, proxy and also site. And he's moving some MP3 files around Windows file shares here. So really you definitely need to have a word with this guy. Let's go back to search page. From here we can also search for a particular file or folder. It's hosted on Windows file shares. Just type it in here. And also we can search for maybe you want to find out who's on Facebook, just type in the website here. Another change we've introduced is the way we can now search for a particular report. So somebody comes to you saying, do we know if anybody's running BitTorrent or can we find out if anybody's running Skype on the network? So if you're not sure if a report is available, start typing in the report name here. So for example, BitTorrent. And then Guardian then prompts you what reports it has available. I mentioned Skype as well, so just type it in. So we've got a couple of Skype reports there too. Select the report and you can then just run it. The next change in this version of LangGuardian is an updated security style report. So go to reports, Vince by security by signature is an updated report. If I run it, its output will only focus on security type events. So we've got NetScan, we've got BitTorrent, we've got ConfliktWorm. So it's a fairly compact report. It's telling me there's 11 different types of security events logged. So it's different from the older style report, which used to list all events gathered by LangGuardian. This is a very useful report to review, certainly on a daily basis, just to take, keep a close eye on what's happening on your network. If you want to get the older report, if I go back to reports, under the other section here, you've got the all events report. Let's go by events by signature and run that. So this is the older style report, which lists all events, including things like web activity, SQL, file share activity. It's quite a lot in this report. But I certainly would recommend you change and, and, and focus on this new security by signature report. It gives you a much better output. Next change in this releases the software allows you to see how much space the LangGuardian is using on its disk. So to do that, over the top right here, if you click on the settings icon, go to configuration you've got new option here to check the database status so let's click on this so on my system is storing data from June 08 to April 12 and that is using up 233 megabytes data so this is a new change you can now review how much space is being used on the system let's go back again to my home page so they're the main changes that we've introduced in LangGuardian in version 10 For more information about the Netfort Land Guardian, please visit our website www.netfort.com.